uh, or kind of dormant stage for them for many plants and animals and things slow down. There's still lots of uh, fish and microorganisms and chemistry and all sorts of interesting things going on. But uh, I think it's a, it's a good lesson from nature that uh, there are these different cycles. And so, you know, that is reflected in our jobs kind of here. We're in a lot of the planning and uh, reporting stages. And so this is a good opportunity for all of us to get together and share different, um, different things. So, and if you are like my family, we are really uh, always have been very big winter Olympic fans. And uh, so it's very exciting. The winter is not just a time of, of, of rest and dormancy. It's also this exciting uh, adventure and fun. And the Olympics has a special connection to the Adirondacks being the two-time host. And we have current residents who are over in Beijing competing. So it's, it's very exciting uh, to, to see this. And, you know, I thought it was kind of a good inspirational kind of quote that I saw from uh, Sean White, who's actually going to be competing tonight in this last uh, snow, snowboard half pipe. And he said, you show up at the Olympics and you're no longer you. You're an American Olympian. You're part of this greater whole. And I thought that was a good uh, quote for us because here at APIP, that's kind of how we feel. Each of us represents our own family, our organization, our community. Um, but really, when we all come together, that is our Adirondack Partnership in Regional Invasive Species Management. And so we are the greater, this greater whole. And we know that APIP, we could definitely not do it on our own. And just like our lakes and watersheds are connected, we need to be connected to all of our partners out there. So, um, so today is, is part of that. And the official motto for the Beijing 2022 is together for a shared future. So that's really what we're going to be talking about today is what can we do together? What are the ways we can collaborate, share information? Because we all have a stake in this shared aquatic lakes, streams, uh, environment up here in the Adirondacks. Plus, I got this really cute panda. I mean, the marketers just really hit this one out of the park up there. So my kids love that thing. Um, okay, so we are going to do some welcome and introductions, and uh, then we will have some updates by our public partners, and then we will break into small group discussions based on uh, three different topics, monitoring, management, and prevention, so we can really get in some smaller groups and hopefully have some good discussions about upcoming ideas and projects and things for this year, and then we'll wrap up and adjourn. So, uh, we will go through and do introductions, try to keep them kind of short since we have 45 people on here. Um, uh, you know, just kind of give your name, your organization or location, and um, at least one thing that you are looking forward to in 2022. So I'll start off first and then we'll just kind of go through the, I'll use this list to kind of go through people so you can just unmute yourself and and chime in if you have something you want to, want to share. Um, so I'm Brian Green. I am feel the honor to be the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator for uh, the APIP program as part of the Nature Conservancy in New York. And um, I am looking forward to our Lake Champlain um, boat launch project. That's probably the thing I'm most excited about professionally in 2022. And we'll go to Barbara if she's on the call. And if Barbara's not on the call and doesn't chime in, we'll go to Bill and Kathy, who I did see on the call. Earlier. Hi, Bill and uh, Kathy Widrig. Um, we are from Chattagay Lake, and we've been doing a lake management tracker survey for, um, for Eurasian water milfoil. Um, and uh, just looking to continue to do that. We expanded into another area of our lake last summer. And so we're excited to uh, keep that process going. Thank you, Bill and Kathy. Blake. Hey, Brian. Hey, all. Um, yep, so Blake Newman. I am the Clean Water Advocate with the Adirondack Council. And one thing we're looking forward to is working with Racket Lake Preservation Foundation, their lake association over there on their um, rapidly concluding lake management plan and figuring out an implementation strategy for that. That's what we've been working on. Happy to be here. 
Well, great, Blake. We're happy to have you. And I'm sure we probably have a couple of Racket Lake people too. Um, Bob. Uh, good morning. Uh, Bob Colgrove. I'm president of the East Shore Scroon Lake Association. Um, and I think uh, our organization has been trying to heighten the awareness of terrestrial invasives in our uh, in our area. And we're hoping to gain knowledge from this event. Well, thanks for joining, Bob. Um, Brett. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Brett Wimsat. I'm up at the Paul Smith College Adirondack Watershed Institute. I'm the assistant director of the stewardship program. And uh, say uh, biggest thing I'm looking forward to right now is we have two full-time new staff coming on in the next couple of weeks. So some exciting stuff going into the, into the new season. And we'll get a full update from Brett uh, a little bit later on. Um, Capperton. And if Capperton's not on, we'll go to Carrie. Everybody, uh, Carrie Persian here, Biodiversity Research Manager with the Ossable River Association in Wilmington. And this year, uh, we're really looking forward to training a new uh, 2022 river steward to survey for aquatic invasives along the river corridor and in our watershed lakes and ponds. Great to have you, Carrie. Is, um, is Catherine, Kathy McGlynn. Hi, I'm Kathy McGlynn. I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Coordinator from New York State DEC. And one thing I'm really looking forward to this year is finally getting to distribute the aquatic gardener's guides that we wanted to launch in March of 2020, but the pandemic beat us to that. So finally we have those copies printed out and we'll be distributing them. So yay. Awesome, great. Well, we'll definitely wanna make sure we get a copy too. Um, Christine. And if Christine is not here, we'll go to Christopher. And let's see, I saw Dave Wick on earlier. So let's see, Dave. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Um, Dave Wick with the Lake George Park Commission. Uh, happy to be here today. Um, the thing we're looking forward to in 2022 is our first ever trial aquatic herbicide in Lake George. Um, we're gonna be talking about that very briefly a little bit later. Thanks to Bob Bombard from Warren County Soil and Water and Glenn Sullivan from Solitude for helping us go through this process and uh, hopefully we can get some feedback from you folks. Thanks. Yep, we'll talk more about that at the, um, at the partner section and then probably in the management section too. Um, David Wilson. Yes. Uh, I'm with the Pasico Lake Association. Uh, we've been conducting uh, monitoring for the last like 15 years for invasive species. And this uh, coming year, we're looking forward to getting our lake management plan finally written and uh, something that we can use and, and uh, help the uh, local people to uh, have something to, to work with. That's all. Thank you, David. Um, Donna, Donna Marie. And if um, Donna's not on, we'll go to Eleanor. And if Eleanor's not on, we'll go to Ellen. And then down the next on the list would would be, let's see, where are we? Uh, Emily now? Yes, hi, I'm Emily Tyner with the Lake Clear Association. And uh, one job I'm looking forward to this year is, well, not only snorkeling, but working on a plan. We don't have any invasive species now in Lake Clear. We wanna work on a plan for if and when uh, an invasive species does occur in Lake Clear. Great, that is good to do. Um, thank you, Emily. Uh, Elizabeth. Hey, good morning, everyone. I am Elizabeth Lee. I'm the Director of Education and Interpretation at the Lake Champlain Maritime Museum. And one thing I'm really, really looking forward to in 2022 is 
I'm taking our giant map of the watershed. It's 35 feet by 27 feet. And I'm taking it to schools in the Adirondacks. And um, we are looking for someone to um, work on a AIS lesson plan for the giant map with us. So stay tuned. It's a real beaut if you haven't seen it. Great. That sounds great. We love maps. Um, it's a big one. <laughs> it does sound big. It might be the biggest map I've ever seen. Uh, Ev. I'll put a link in the chat for later. All right. Uh, good morning. Everett McNeil, East Shore Screw Lake Association. Uh, good news is Screw Lake. We still only have two aquatic invasives, uh, EM and Curly Pondweed. Uh, we have an aggressive scout program. We have about 25 scouts that uh, survey the entire lake, nine miles long every year looking for uh, both those and any other new uh, invasives and uh, it's been a pretty successful program this past year we have four weeks of harvest every year we only harvested i think about eight or nine hundred pounds of invasives uh, as bob colgrove mentioned earlier we're adding a pretty big uh, focus on terrestrials um, and trying to get our membership involved in that uh, the only other thing I can mention is this past year, uh, Screw Lake became uh, loon certified. We're a loon certified uh, lake. Uh, we did that in conjunction with the Screw Lake Association. That's all I have. Thanks, Ev. And next we'll go to Ezra. <clears throat> Hi, this is Ezra Schwartzberg. I am the director of Adirondack Research. We perform uh, aquatic invasive species surveys for the state, for prisms, and for private lake associations. One of the things that we are really excited about this year has to do with our green goat map line. We are producing waterproof maps for lake associations that have a bunch of educational content for responsible recreation and AIS prevention. So we're excited to do a couple more of those. Awesome. More mapping. Never can have enough. Uh, Frank. And if Frank's not on, we'll go to Gail. Good morning. I'm Gail Morehouse. I'm the president of the Racket Lake Preservation Foundation. Um, I guess the thing that I'm looking forward to the most is uh, working with Blake Newman from the Adirondack Council. He is a relatively new hire that was assigned to our area of the park. And not only is he gonna help us with implementation of our newly finished uh, lake management plan, but I'm excited about some of the research projects that we will be, be, be starting. Um, also some of the public events that we're talking about uh, as we put together, as we sort of switch our emphasis to education. And that's about it. Great, thank you, Gail. Um, Graham. Yes, Brian, I'm uh, Graham Cox. Uh, I am uh, part of a thing called Pioneer Village Association, which is in Bolton Landing. 45 families on about 50 acres. We have a beach and a boathouse. And I'm constantly being asked by association members who bring me these chewed up pieces of vegetation is this Eurasian milfoil? And you can never tell from what I got. I'd love to have a poster that I can put on the boathouse that says this is milfoil and these things are not. Well, that's something we can help with and we definitely appreciate you help educating your, uh, your neighbors. And maybe that'd be something uh, good to get them involved in our Lake Protectors program. So thanks, Graham. Okay. Um, let's see, Guy, Guy Middleton. Hi, my name is Guy Middleton. Um, I'm the Lake Manager for Upper Saranac Foundation. Um, looking forward to wrapping up our watershed management plan and beginning implementation of that plan, <clears throat> which is based on hundreds of uh, participants who were involved in, uh, in developing that plan. <clears throat> Excuse me. We're also uh, looking forward to uh, continuing our invasive success um, in management and expanding into uh, some surrounding water bodies uh, in the watershed. Great, that is that's good news to hear, Guy. Um, Ho Yen. And if Ho Yen's not on, we'll go to Jamie. 
Hello, I'm Jamie Parsley. I work for Hamilton County Soil and Water. Um, this summer, we're really looking forward to seeing a project on 6th and 7th Lake come to fruition. We were able to find some funding to help folks there manage their milfoil problems. So we're looking forward to seeing that happen and just looking forward to a great summer on the lakes. All right. All right. Thank you, Jamie. Yes, we're excited for that project too. Um, Jen. And if Jen's not here, we'll go to John. Uh, hi, this is John Olm. Uh, in the past, I've served as the steward supervisor for the town of Caroga's Aquatic Invasive Species Prevention Program, uh, hoping for continuation of this effort uh, in partnership with the Canada Lakes Conservation Association, the Adirondack Watershed Institute, DEC, and the Area Lake Associations. Thank you. All right, thank you, John. Uh, Kathy. Hi, this is Kathy Regan. I'm with the Adirondack Park Agency and I'm looking forward to fixing some of our administrative issues and I will discuss that more in the partners section. Thank you. Great, Kathy, great to have you here. Uh, Kenneth. And if Kenneth is not on, we'll go to Kieran. <laughs> and if we're not seeing Kieran, we'll go to Kirsten. <laughs> then Liz. Hi, I'm Liz Metzger. I'm the research associate with the Osceola River Association. And I'm looking forward to expanding the lakes that we'll be surveying for invasive species this season. Awesome, that's great, Liz. Um, uh, Lori. I, I am able to be on, Brian. <laughs> Hi, it's Lori Mott, and um, I am a boat steward for the town of Caroga, as well as the uh, chair of the invasive species for our Canada Lake Association. I'm looking forward to working with five other lakes in our area to kind of have a stronger voice and help each other, as well as the uh, mandate that the governor, governor signed so that we can have cleaner boats and cleaner waters. Great. That is a, that is a um, yes. The the new uh, boat transportation and clean drain dry law is is a good uh, resource that we're working with the DEC and our other partners here. Um, Marcus. Hey. Good morning. Uh, it's Marcus Harrison from the also with the Canada Lake Conservation Association and uh, was happy to work with. APIP this summer to do uh, and have Brian come down and do uh, a really good educational program. We want to build on that this year and joined by several of our members uh, today and uh, continue working with the uh, town of Kroga on uh, education and prevention program. So I really uh, enjoyed learning that folks are working with schools. Uh, we want to learn how to do that here too. But uh, most importantly, I think we like to hear more about what uh, DEC intends to do with their funding for invasive aquatic species. If anybody has any clues on that today, uh, we're a grantee. We've been working with that program successfully here in the town of Kroga and, and uh, hope to apply again. Uh, and thanks for doing this session. It's just so important for us to get together even during COVID to, uh, to network and share information. Thanks. Thank you, Marcus. Yes, we're, we're glad that so many people are on here. Um, Mark. Hi, this is Mark Denacor. I'm one of the directors of the Shady Lake Watershed Initiative. We're looking forward to continuing our milfoil harvesting work on the lake. We have our own dash boat, but we're also looking to hire a professional milfoil harvesting company this summer to spend some money that we received from the Lake Champlain Basin program uh, for, for milfoil harvesting. Uh, but what we're finding out is that there are not many companies out there, professional harvesting companies that uh, are doing milfoil harvesting. So I'm hoping uh, during this call, we're able to share information about what other companies might be out there that do this kind of work. Uh, I'm concerned that we all have these plans to 
battle uh, invasive species, but if no one is actually out there willing and able to do the work that we need done, uh, that it's going to bring all of our progress to a grinding halt. That's all I have. Thanks, Mark. Yes, that is a, a common um, challenge that our lake associations and partners face. So we can probably talk about that in the management one. And we definitely have a list of um, uh, regional companies that we can get you in contact with. Um, Marty. Good morning. I'm Martin Korn and uh, I'm, I sit on the board of directors of the Scroon Lake Association, uh, which was founded in 1911 and has been in uh, existence since then and may be the oldest volunteer lake association in the country. Uh, we uh, see as our mission the, to preserve and protect the vast watershed of Scroon Lake, which is uh, over 400 square miles, and work in conjunction with the Paradox Lake Association, the East Shore Scroon Lake Association, and uh, active in the steering committee for Scroon Lake. Uh, it's a big job with volunteers, and uh, we've been very active. Uh, have been doing this sea slap program and have a very clean lake. And uh, in recent years, ESLA, East Shore Screen Lake Association has become more active with uh, sea slap and that has been very much appreciated as well as their other activities uh, in terms of activities I've talked about earlier. Um, it's a big job, but we, continue to want to work cooperatively with everyone who has similar interests. And uh, thank you, Martin. Yeah. Um, Mary Johnson. Good morning. I am on the board of the Shadowgate Foundation, uh, which is now entering its 15th year of managing aquatic invasive species on Shadowgate Lake. Uh, we're constantly looking for ways to improve the cost effectiveness, effectiveness of our strategy. And uh, this year, we're in the process of evaluating the of herbicide um, as a potential control mechanism. So we're very interested in learning uh, more about how other lakes are approaching that. And perhaps we'll find out more at this meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Mary Jablonski. If we don't have our second Mary, we'll go to Matthew. And I saw Meg on. Yep, good morning. Um, thanks, uh, Meg Modley with the Lake Champlain Basin Program. I'm the Aquatic Invasive Species Management Coordinator. Um, what am I looking forward to in 2022? Um, definitely some field days out on, in, or under the water, preferably. Um, I'd like to get out hiking with my family, and I'm really looking forward to my three-year-old daughter being vaccinated. Good. We'll get a further update from Meg in the partner section. So we'll go to Michael. We don't have Michael here. We'll go to Mike and Phyllis. Nadine. Nancy. Hi, I'm Nancy Severn. I'm with the Paseco Lake Association. And I'm just, I'm, a, I'm an interested listener here and I'm just looking forward to getting back to the lake with all of our whole suite of activities. So thank you. Thanks for joining Nancy. Nancy. Ryan, I think we had Nadine. I think Nadine was able to join in. Oh, okay, go Nadine. Hi, uh, yeah, I'm new on the board of directors of the Friends of Moreau Lake and a longtime citizen scientist for LGA, and I look forward to helping more in 2022. Great to have you join. Um, I think we're up to Natasha. Hi, I'm Natasha karniski keglovitz I work for SUNY ESF up at the Adirondack Ecological Center in Newcomb. Um, so this summer, I'm looking forward to having extra crew members so we can hopefully... Um, get to some lakes out in the forest preserve for a project we're working on. 
um, looking at some of the ecological monitoring tools um, out in the forest preserves. So we're excited to expand what we're doing. Great, um, Paul. Uh, hi, Paul Repack from Boonville Search and Rescue. I'm also on the board of directors for Snowbird Lake Association uh, near Forestport. Um, and uh, on the newly formed uh, Aquatic Vegetation Committee, um, we don't have any invasives that I know of that we've been able to identify, but uh, our biggest problem is uh, trying to figure out how to uh, mitigate uh, native species from overtaking the lake. All right, thank you, Paul. Paul Lett. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, I'm Paulette Hawes. I'm a seasonal resident of Long Lake and a newly minted uh, board member of the Long Lake Association. So I have a very high learning curve here, uh, finding out what needs to be done and what is being done. Uh, there is um, Barb Taylor is our president and she didn't answer when we first started uh, but I do know that we have a Long Lake management plan that was printed out in November of 2021. And um, there are many recommendations, but I, I suppose we can get into some of that uh, in a later part of this uh, webinar. Thank you. Thank you, Paulette. Penny. Penny's not here. We'll go to Peter. Uh, hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can, Peter. Okay. Um, I'm in the Lake Pleasant Second Ag Association and speculator, and I look forward to another year of searching for invasives and not finding them. <clears throat> I also am interested in the person who said they have a native invasive, which we seem to be having a problem with at uh, Lake Pleasant. <clears throat> That's all I have. All right, and we'll go to Randy. Hi, I'm Randy Fredland. Uh, I'm looking forward. Uh, actually, I uh, am involved with the Canada Lake uh, Conservation Association, and I'm looking forward to doing quality control on Lori Mott's efforts. Now, really, uh, bottom line is uh, I'll echo, echo Peter's sentiment in that I'm looking forward to uh, looking at the lake with a number of other folks that we have recruited in order to verify that we have no invasives and continue to do so. And just uh, piggyback on the fine work that others have done who've come before me. Thank you. Thank you, Randy. Um, uh, Becca. Hi folks, I'm Becca Bernacki. I am the Terrestrial Invasive Species Project Coordinator. Um, so I'm Brian's terrestrial counterpart. I guess one thing I'm looking forward to in 2022 uh, is our expanded seasonal capacity um, and just a lot more folks out on the ground doing all of this important work. Thanks, Brian. And Becca is a great resource for all those people who have terrestrial questions. And a lot of you were on the terrestrial talk on Tuesday. Um, Richard. Hi, I'm Richard Gentry. I'm a crew leader with Invasive Plant Control. Uh, for the last two years, I've been leading our terrestrial work with the Nature Conservancy as one of Becca's team. Uh, we've helped out with some of the aquatic projects in the past. Um, so one thing I'm looking forward to is we're currently working on hiring our team for this summer. Great, Richard. We're happy to have you all back again. Um, Robert, Bob. Good morning. I'm Bob Bombard, Warren County Soil and Water. Just looking forward to getting back in and under the water next summer. Oh, and the release of our 30-minute uh, educational film funded by uh, Nui Pick and the Lake Champlain Basin on uh, diving in Lake George. Awesome. We'll definitely want to share that around when you get that. Um, Steve. Steve is not on. We'll go to Susan Smith. Susan Reed. Hi, everyone. I'm Susan Reed, newly elected president of the Paseco Lake Association. So I have a couple of my board members here with me. 
I'm a new kid on the block, taking names, taking notes, very excited to continue to protect our lake and uh, really through education and prevention. So I'm glad to be here. Thank you. Awesome, Susan. We're thrilled to have you here too. And we'll go to Tamara. Good morning, everyone. I'm the APIP manager, and I'm excited about lots of things this summer and also about filling our communications coordinator position so that once we head into the summer, we can help many of the lake associations out if you need presentations on aquatic invasive species or someone to come talk to your lake association between Brian, me, and our coordinator, we should be able to do that. Also want to make sure that we are able to get out more of the Protect Your Waters posters and Protect Your Waters brochures that we created last year. We do still have a supply of those and some ability to send them to lake associations at no cost. You can order them on our website. Okay, back to you, Brian. Uh, Tom. Yeah. Hi, Brian. Uh, I'm here from Friends Lake Property Owners Association. I'm on the board there and also on the uh, Committee for Invasive Species. Uh, happy to report at this time we have no invasive species. We have a, a good uh, volunteer group that goes out each year and surveys the lake um, and we hope to continue success. One thing I'm looking forward to is getting people more involved in the terrestrial invasive species. I think that's something that we haven't done a lot of time. I think we need some information and get people involved in that as well. Thank you. We can definitely get you hooked up with Becca, uh, Tom, and um, Zachary. Uh, yeah, hi, I'm Zachary Matson. I'm the water reporter at the Adirondack Explorer, and I'm just interested in getting out into the field and learning more about a lot of these projects. So I'm also interested in seeing the big map that's high on my priority list now. So I'll pop my email into the chat here, and if anyone is so inclined, you know, reach out to me uh, whenever with uh, what you guys are working on. Thank you. Yes, thanks, Zachary, for coming. I definitely enjoy your coverage in the Explorer. So it's good to have somebody who focuses on water in our region. Um, is there anybody else who's on the call and uh, I didn't read their name? Uh, yeah, my name is Jenny Allison. I'm a um, restoration ecologist who work, I work for a ecological consulting company, but um, I've been doing a lot of work up in the North Country over the past two years up on um, up in Messina and then we've been working with Brittany Rogers over at Slilo Prism on some of their invasive mm. uh, work so um, kind of fell in love with the area I'm digging the Adirondacks so I wanted to uh, sit in on this meeting and see what what you guys have going on up here. Well, thank you for joining Jenny. Steve I saw you pop in there and I think we, we went through you Steve Young. Yeah, hi, I'm Steve Young with the Chief Botanist with the New York Natural Heritage Program. And I look forward to getting out in the field more this summer than I did last summer in the Adirondacks and working with the Adirondack Botanical Society to continue our flora inventories of Valcor Island and Lake Champlain and uh, the river ice, ice meadows along the Hudson in Warrensburg and looking at aquatics in both those places and any invasives that are there. And also uh, my annual a white face uh, vegetation trip with the New York Flora Association and on July 9th. Great, anyone else? Mm -hmm. As soon as you walk in here. Excuse me, I did not know. Oh, okay. okay, well, um, Karen, maybe now everybody can kind of mute themselves as we'll go to our next section. Um, thank you everyone for attending. So we'll send out an email afterwards with the link to the meeting recording. Um, also, a lot of people had sent us some bulleted updates that people sent me via an email. So if there's anything else you want to share with the entire group, uh, you can send that to me and we'll send a, a complete summary out to everybody. Um, we'll move to our public partners section. So we have a couple minutes from uh, everyone, to, uh, from our public partners to give a kind of uh, quick regional uh, overview. And we'll do it in alphabetical order by the organization's name. So first one up is the Adirondack Park Agency, Kathy. Thank you, Brian. Um, good morning again, everyone. My name is Kathy Regan. I'm the supervisor of the Resource and Scientific Services Division at the Park Agency. 
and we're sort of involved with the administrative end of invasive species management and trying to remove any obstacles that may be there so that these uh, species can be treated. Some of you may be aware um, that the APA has a MOU in conjunction with the DEC on how we can do certain things um, relating, relating to the state land master plan. There's an appendix in that MOU that we're updating right now. Um, we've been working with APIP on this and DEC to try to make it easier um, for us to be doing invasive species management on forest preserve. That uh, MO or that appendix to that MOU was last updated in 2018 and it's a little cumbersome. So hopefully um, we will have a draft coming out for public comment on that sometime in the next couple of months. The other project that I'm working on that um, would involve invasive species management is uh, hopefully next month is tentatively on the schedule for the March agency meeting, a UMP amendment um, to the generic campground generic UMP, which would allow watercraft decontamination stations to be placed at the campgrounds. Um, this may not seem like a big deal, but it, for us to be able to put it in that DEC doesn't have to come to us every single time they want to put a, a decon station at a campground, it would just simplify things immensely. I don't anticipate that one be a pro being a problem in any, any means, um, but if all goes on schedule, we'll have it on the March agency board meeting and go out for a concurrent public comment with DEC and probably back for the board to uh, vote on that sometime in early summer. So that's what we're working on that would directly affect aquatics right now. Thank you. Great, thank you, Kathy. And thank you for everything that the APA does for uh, to support invasive species. Um, I'll go for the Adirondack Park Invasive Plant Program. Uh, like we said, this is uh, the, uh, kind of wrapping up the planning season. So our 2021 annual report is out and maybe if one of my colleagues can put a link to that in the chat, uh, you can go on our website and see this. Uh, so shows terrestrial, aquatic, uh, partner highlights from all across the region. So thank you for all our partners who contributed data and um, you know, show the great work that we do across this region. I especially encourage everybody to read the highlight portion if you haven't done that. Um, so it's a kind of a six page uh, summary of everything. We also have our 2021 uh, Aquatic Invasive Species Early Detection Report. And that is uh, the photo you see right here that's also available online. That is the 52 lakes in the south eastern part of the uh, park that we, uh, with Adirondack Research, surveyed. Um, lots of maps, lots of information on what invasive species are present and where, so it's a great wealth of resource. Um, and you can also see our past reports on there. And then, uh, APIP, we are currently um, working on our 2022 uh, strategic plan. So this is a five-year plan to set our goals and objectives for across the prism for what we should be doing. You should have received a link to a, a survey that we have, a public survey. So if you haven't completed that, um, please take an opportunity to complete that by tomorrow so we can get um, some of your, your feedback. Uh, in 2022, we will be continuing our monitoring program. So our Lake Protectors is our citizen community science project where uh, anyone across the region can participate and get trained on how to identify and report invasive species. This is critically important for us to know where species are. So we encourage everyone uh, to participate and we thank the many people on this call who, um, who have done this in the past. Uh, we will again hire an early detection team and we will, they will be working on the uh, west, southwest portion of the, the park in like the uh, Racket, uh, Asawagachi, Black River watersheds. So we'll be reaching out to some of our partners in there to try to prioritize which lakes. Uh, we cannot monitor all the lakes, but we try to choose um, the ones that are uh, best for the region to monitor. We will also be working in that same region with uh, our partner PRISM, uh, the St. Lawrence Eastern Lake Ontario PRISM to do environmental DNA or eDNA surveys on lakes and rivers that drain from the Adirondacks into uh, Lake Ontario to be searching for key invasive species. 
And once again, our lake management tracker. So this is for communities or lake associations that have invaded lakes and it, um, APIP provides a technical support to uh, allow them to assess the effectiveness of their management strategies. So um, we provide the technical background and you provide the volunteers that help do the monitoring. So that we'll be doing all those monitoring in 2022. And there's a couple other projects that we are, are working on. Uh, the, T, the Nature Conservancy in New York is doing an outreach campaign right now uh, about round goby. Um, we wanna keep round goby out of Lake Champlain. And so the policy team is working on outreaching to local organizations and elected officials to encourage closing, temporarily closing a lock to create a temporary barrier on the Champlain Canal to prevent round goby and other AIS. Um, so you might be hearing about that. We have a fact sheet out it if you would you like to see it. Um, we are also updating our tiered species list. So most likely something like round goby is going to become on as a, as a tier one. Um, so there'll be some new species uh, that we're going to want people in the region to keep uh, a lookout for. And then, like I mentioned before, we are doing a Lake Champlain boat launch program where we are targeting two boat launches on the New York side to remove aquatic invasive species. And we're partnering with the Adirondack Watershed Institute to see if that will reduce the boats that are retrieving from there with uh, aquatic invasive species. So these boat launches were identified as some of the highest vectors of spreading invasive species. So we are trying to see if we can do a project to reduce that. And that is a good segue to our next partner, uh, the Adirondack Watershed Institute. So Brett, will go next. Perfect. Thanks, Brian. Morning, everyone. Uh, so yeah, my name is Brett Wimsat. I am the assistant director director for the stewardship program at uh, the Paul Smith College Adirondack Watershed Institute. So uh, quite a few of you now are probably pretty bored with hearing a lot of our updates from this past season. So I'm not going to go too much into that. Our reports are out for that. So anyone that's interested in seeing those, I encourage you to take a look at those. Um, so really what I wanted to highlight here first is just go into some of the big changes that we're going um, that, that we have coming up right now, you know, that's really going to be preparing us for this upcoming season. And uh, first of which is we have two brand new um, um, hires coming on, one of which is an education outreach coordinator coming on next week. And then we have a new director for the stewardship program coming on later next month. I'm going to uh, hold off announcing who those individuals are. We just, we're going to be publicly announcing that here in the next few weeks. So we're very excited to have those two positions on a um, lot of, you know, projected projects for the education outreach that's th that are going to be coming down the pipe. So very excited to uh, get those two um, individuals into their positions and going for this for this summer. Um, so one of the biggest issues that we had last year and that we're looking to mend for this year, and it, it's not a much of a shocker to anyone, it was hiring. Uh, we hire a lot of individuals. We bring on about 115 seasonal each year to cover, you know, vast majority of the Adirondack Park as a whole. So last year we were short uh, 20 plus uh, stewards throughout the region. And so we're, we're looking to basically um, how we can have more people apply, but then also kind of in, increase the, you know, the additional values of the position to hold those individuals throughout the season. So we're doing a lot this off season to kind of be able to build up that um, applicant base. And so part of that is we're on way more um, job boards and college boards than usual. Um, but other things that we're looking to do as well is we're going to be starting an implementation of uh, a uh, internship based program partnering with our mothership, Paul Smith College. So that is something that we're going to be rolling out here in the next few weeks is offering up college credits up to six uh, for individuals where they're going to be able to both work, um, you know, for their paycheck, but also um, advance their um, their college time here at Paul Smith College. So uh, it's an interesting uh you know, new avenue that we're looking to, to uh, kind of enhance the, you know, the overall um, position as a whole. Um, so, so far that's going well, hiring is going well, um, and fingers crossed that all other programs that we're dealing with, that we can get all of our stewards out to your lake associations this summer. So we're doing our best at that currently. Um, something else that we were looking into for this spring is we really want to enhance the education aspect to our staff. 
uh, making sure that they are, you know, as well equipped as possible as they're going into the field, which can be very difficult, especially with the last couple seasons with uh, COVID. So one, um, you know, benefit from COVID that actually came up was, um, was our training two years ago. We switched over to about 80% online. And so now we have adopted that as kind of our, our new norm. And so we have a great online system um, that is then also coupled with an in-person. And so something that we're rolling out this year that's gonna be that other you know, partners and lake associations are gonna have access to is we filmed over 20 short um, training videos this past fall during October. Uh, so we're really looking forward to those. They cover everything from how to use the decon equipment, how to remove vegetation from plants, how to interact with a boater, whether it's an incoming or outgoing boat. So it's going to be a really cool video series that's going to be available for our training purposes, as well as other partners, um, probably by mid-April or so. So really excited about that. It's, uh, I think it's really going to be a, you know, a good boost to the performance of our staff, but also as a resource to the rest of the programs throughout the park. Um, and then diving into the main part of the season, we don't have a ton of major changes. Um, this is a year that it's largely going to be heavy front loaded with preparing preseason. Biggest challenges is going to be bringing on um, the amount of staff that we need. Um, but ultimately, we're going to be staffing all of our normal locations with a couple changes, um, everything from north to south on the Champlain coastline and then throughout the interior for Great Sock and Dog up Fulton Chain, Saranac Chain up through. So we're looking forward to another busy, fun season and uh, looking forward to working with the rest of our partners here. Great, Brett. Thanks for that update. And yeah, if you, um, we really appreciate all the boat stewards. They are a critical part of our prevention. So if anybody knows anyone who's looking for a seasonal or part-time job, um, you know, please go to the website and encourage them to apply. Thanks, Brian. Uh, next up is the DEC and Kathy. Thanks, Brian. So I'm just gonna do some highlights for 2022, as opposed to going over some events from 2021, because you've already heard quite a bit of that from me in previous meetings. So major highlights for us include the hiring of the Region 7 and Region 9 AS coordinators who started February 1st. Region 7 is Michael Robinson, Region 9 is Lindsay Yoder, the former AIS program manager from LH PRISM. We're also moving forward with collecting bids for the South Cayuga Aquatic Plant Survey as well as the Aurora Hydrilla herbicide treatment projects. We are now collaborating with Army Corps and Aurora to treat a little over half the infestation and Army Corps will be treating the other half. As I had mentioned in a previous meeting, the infestation has more than doubled in size and it's beyond the budget of Army Corps at this point. Another highlight is the soon to be released, probably by the end of May, early April, the, water, the new Watercraft Inspection Steward Program Manual, which is being updated. The last version was from 2014, so it was well overdue to get this done. So I'm very excited about that. All of our WISP Watercraft Inspection Steward programs are prepping for the season. And, and as Brett had mentioned, folks are now recruiting for their stewards across the state. So if you know of anyone in need of a part-time or summer job, please, send them to us and we can get them that information. Another project we're working on, first time we'll be working on a large scale project in Long Island. We're about to embark on our Peconic River Ludwigia and European Frogbit Control Project. So we, we have um, just got our bids yesterday and we'll be sorting through that and hopefully awarding the contract soon and having contractors in place to start conducting the aquatic plant surveys and the treatment most likely by June. And I had mentioned earlier that our Aquatic Gardener's Guide is now available, it's in print, so I will be distributing those shortly. We also will be having new launch signs at our DEC launches this year in collaboration with Parks. We'll be having this very similar sign. So I'm working with fisheries and ops to get that, those installed. I'm not sure how many will get installed before the season starts, but we'll do our best to, to hit many of the major launches. Our new life release brochures are available now, and we'll, we'll also continue with our education outreach effort in New York City. I'll keep people posted on that. And then finally, I wanted to mention everyone that the National Invasive Species Awareness Week will be February 28th to March 3rd this year. 
And I did send Brian and other, other folks in our AIS team the schedule for presentations, which are all virtual. So if folks are interested in that, please reach out. Thank you. Thank you, Kathy. Yes, we'll share those links with everyone after, um, after this meeting. Next up is the Lake Champlain Basin Program and Meg. Hey, Brian, thanks. Um, that's, it seems like it's busy all times of the year now. Um, so, uh, for, so folks are aware um, for applicants that applied for grants in the Lake Champlain portion um, of the basin in New York, uh, those aquatic invasive species spread prevention grant award and decline letters are out. Um, we, are, we are going through the process of selecting a graduate student um, to come to the University of Vermont to populate the Lake Champlain Aquatic Nuisance Species Information System, which mirrors the GLANSIS model. Um, this is a cooperative effort between Lake Champlain Sea Grant and the Lake Champlain Basin Program. And we're trying to pick off priorities that have been identified in a gaps analysis paper that was written to Congress um, responding to the Vessel Incidental Discharge Act's creation of the Great Lakes and Lake Champlain Invasive Species Program. It's a mouthful. Um, but one of the biggest pieces that we're missing is populating a database of aquatic invasive species for the Lake Champlain watershed that can then um, turn and take uh, the this, this species through a risk assessment process that U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has developed and help create a watch list. Um, so that's a really exciting piece that we're cooperating with um, the Great Lakes Research um, Laboratory as well as USGS. Um, the Champlain Canal Barrier Feasibility Study Phase 1 is concluding. Uh, we will share the final report when it goes out. As a reminder, um, the Water Resources Development Act of 2000 identifies um, the Champlain Canal Barrier Aquatic Nuisance Species Feasibility Study as, um, as a need, and Senator Leahy secured Great Lakes Fishery Commission dollars to initiate the Phase 1 feasibility study, so evaluating different types of barriers that could be implemented on the Champlain Canal to prevent the interbasin transfer of aquatic invasive species between the Lake Champlain and the Hudson drainage. Um, this has been elevated by a few points. Um, former Governor Cuomo's Reimagine the Canals initiative did look um, as a part of that work at invasive species and the recent detection of round goby at the confluence of the Mohawk and the Hudson Rivers um, is really putting um, some more pressure on finding a solution to prevent um, species from moving through the system. So round goby is what we're spending a lot of our time on right now. Um, we have an aquatic nuisance species rapid response task force with members from Quebec, New York, and Vermont that are evaluating ecological and economic impacts, the need for awareness about bait bucket transfer because the closer a viable population gets to the Lake Champlain watershed, the more likely a bait bucket introduction may be to occur. Um, so there's a, quite a bit of work going on there and we're looking to secure funds to support a full-time person to work on outreach along the Champlain Canal corridor who would likely be housed at New York DEC um, to work with communities and businesses and raise awareness about um, the impacts of aquatic invasive species through the Champlain Canal. We are also vigorously hiring lake stewards for Lake Champlain. Uh, we've started almost a month ago. Um, our tools in our toolkit, we are trying to raise the starting hourly wage, um, offer some more flexibility for stewards, um, but it is a challenge to get enough bodies out there um, to implement our programs. The job market is tighter than one would think. Um, so we collaborate with, with our partners on that, but we're, we're working hard to cut, get the Vermont side of the lake covered as well as some launches in Quebec on Missisquoi Bay. And then if we can get good candidates um, on the Northern end of Lake Champlain, we help New York parks cover a few of those sites up there. Um, I just wanted to make one comment, and we have been uh, long overdue for our Aquatic Invasive Species Identification Guide, which we, we anticipate having printed finally for this field season. Um, and Mark Denacor made a comment about the lack of um, contractors out there to do aquatic invasive species management, which is significant. And so 
Um, Kathy McGlynn is also the president of the Northeast Aquatic Plant Management Society, and I'm the secretary, and we are reporting nationally on the need to retain students in the field of aquatic plants and management, and also the need for additional um, folks to work in permitting on these issues. Um, it's not just unique to our region, but across the country, there's a greater need um, for folks in our, in our discipline. Thank you. Thank you, Meg, for those updates. And um, last but definitely not least, Lake George Park Commission, Dave. Yeah, thanks, Brian. Um, just a couple of slides on the commission's uh, potential for Selacor effort. We've been managing Eurasian milfoil with our partner, Lake George Association, for many years. And we're looking to go in a different route, uh, looking to uh, move to a potential a couple of pilot sites of an aquatic herbicide uh, called Brasilicor. I may ask Bob Bombard to jump in occasionally here. So we've been spending quite a bit of money for many years on Lake George, and we had good success, but we're struggling with some sites, uh, particularly up north. And so we're looking at going to Brasilicor. And I don't know if anybody on the call has worked with this yet, but uh, maybe Meg has. I sent Meg an email this morning. So we're looking to do a couple sites, four acre sites up in the northern part of the lake. There's Meg. And maybe Meg can chime in a little bit. But Brasilicor doesn't really seem to have any other impacts to other plants. And, <clears throat> excuse me, it works pretty well. Uh, next slide. So let me see, let me fix my screen here, I'm struggling. There we go, one more second. Okay, so Saratoga Lake has used it pretty effectively and Minerva Lake has used it pretty effectively. And so what we're hoping to do is do two four acre sites uh, in Lake George starting in June. Again, thanks to Bob Bombard for doing our plant survey. Uh, we pulled in Glenn Sullivan from Solitude who's doing uh, our permitting work. Uh, next slide. And this is the site. So we have Blairs Bay in Glen Burnie and Sheep Meadow Bay. And uh, we're hoping for an early June treatment, but we're still working with APA and DEC on the permits, which we hope to have in a couple of months. And I guess I'm just interested in who else might be kind of looking at this as an application for this year or who has experience with it. We're kind of new to any kind of aquatic herbicide treatment on Lake George. So any of that advice would be great. And just kind of looking for kind of feedback and thoughts. And I know there's some relative experts on this uh, call that we don't really have the expertise at the commission. So people like Meg and Bob and Bob and other folks, it would seem to make sense. If you have any thoughts or feedback, that would be fantastic. So that's kind of a, a quick summary. And I don't know if maybe Meg or Bob or anybody else could chime in just with you know, 30 seconds of their experience or knowledge on this product be really helpful for the commission just to get a better feel for who's using this in the region, what the results have been. It seems to work pretty well. I know Saratoga Lake and Minerva Lake have gone uh, very well with really no rebound of milfoil in those areas. So uh, that's kind of the quick summary of where we're at, but I'm just kind of looking more for feedback from you folks as to how well you know the product, how it's going <laughs> in the lakes, and uh, you know if there's any opportunities that we might be missing out on. We're looking to go to our, um, I guess, request for quotes pretty soon. And uh, the more knowledge we have, the better. And your expertise would be very helpful. So uh, thanks for the time and look forward to any feedback. Doesn't happen to happen now. Just reach out to me after or uh, maybe Meg or Bob, if you have any thoughts on it, that'd be very helpful. So thank you very much, Ryan. Um, Bob Bombard. I know um, most, most of my career was spent on Lake George working on milfoil uh, with um, RPI College. And early in the 90s, we, we attempted to uh, try to control some of these populations using different methods, hand harvesting where it was scattered, suction harvesting where it was denser beds and uh, benthic barrier in a number of spots. Um, uh, the hand harvesting and the suction harvesting worked well in the softer sediment areas. Um, when you get into um, benthic conditions of, of cobble and rock, um, 
the hand harvesting uh, becomes very ineffective. And depending on the size of that cobble and rock, uh, the same is true with benthic barriers. And the benthic barriers, they also kill everything underneath them. And uh, one of the problems with milfoil is uh, it comes up earlier in the year than our native plants. And uh, all that did was leave large fallow areas uh, for the milfoil to come back uh, even stronger, taking out whatever natives were around. So the benthic barrier really isn't, uh, isn't a, a very effective method. Lake George forever, the thought of using herbicides was um, repulsive to most. And uh, we've gotten to the point now where the amount of money being spent uh, attempting to control these populations is just ballooned. And uh, I think it's, it might be, might be time with a herbicide like Procellicor to at least uh, take a run at it, see if we can get some of these larger populations uh, under control. Great, Bob. Hey, well, just, that, yeah. well, Meg, I don't want to uh, cut us off it's it's because of time. We are going to move into small group discussion. So if you are yep. interested in talking about um, this, this would be the management uh, choice that, that people will get to have. Now, we don't want everybody to go to management. So how we're going to do these um, breakouts is uh, we have three topics, monitoring, um, you know, so documenting AIS locations, abundance, doing these surveys, early detection stuff management, talking about removal of invasive species via mechanical or chemical, and then prevention and outreach. So information and programs that prevent the spread. I'm going to be leading the monitoring one. Um, Kathy McGlynn from DEC is going to be leading the management, and Tamara is going to be leading the prevention and outreach. So um, something will pop up on your screen here, and you'll get to choose which one you want to go to. We'll go to spend 10 minutes in one group, We'll all quickly come back together and then we'll get to come, you get to choose another group. So if everybody, you know, we don't need all 40 people to go right into management if they want that kind of split it up. And then, you know, we can, you can divvy yourselves up. So you'll have two chances to go through. You're not gonna get to go to all three of them. Um, and then we'll come back and we will do a, uh, a summary. Does that make sense to everyone? Okay, so I am going to, hopefully do this and click open all rooms now and you should be able to see something will pop up and you can click um, what 